What's up, guys? I just watched Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier 3. It was an awesome fight, and here's what I thought. Right back down, but you love lifts me back to solid ground. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ensign Inouye. I'm here with uh, my buddy James, and we're going to, we uh, kind of thought about discussing something that, you know, was the highlight of my week. Okay, so we're here to talk about the, the big fight that happened today, earlier today. Uh, Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier 3. So, let's jump into what we thought. <laughs> yeah, man. So, so first off, where did you watch it? Like, what's, what's the, where are you watching it to? Yeah, so I was watching it on, uh, it was kind of interesting because in, it's in Japan here. We don't have ESPN Plus. Okay. So, in Japan, uh, we just watch it on uh, the Fight Pass. So, I have a Fight Pass account. And I just subscribed to, you know, I just ordered the pay-per-view and um, got to watch it live. Yeah. yeah. So did, where did, did you watch it? Where did you watch it? I watched it in the early hours of the morning. <laughs> Ooh, what time was it there? So I had watched it after it finished, but I kept my phone off just to like avoid all the spoilers. Um, so I think Ooh. I watched it about 8 a.m. But normally, like when they go live in the octagon, it's like like the main event time. It was probably like about 5 a.m. So it's a bit of a killer to sort of stay up for the whole card. I Me and some friends have done it in the past, but it's got to be like a really good card to keep you awake for till like 5, 6 a.m. So <laughs> For me, for me, um, the fight prelims, fight pass prelims started at 7 a.m. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I was already up, so I watched that and then I watched the prelims. And then I think about 11 or 10 or 11, the main card started. Yeah. It's... And and watched the whole thing, man, here in Japan. It was pretty awesome. I freaking enjoyed it. Bad, bad day for weather. It was pouring rain, but it didn't matter because I was sitting in the house watching the fights. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It's like, it's, it's raining here as well, and there's nothing better when you've got a good, a decent fight card to sort of just sit back and relax. I mean, but for me... Before, before, we, before yeah. we even start, I was thinking, who, who, before the fight, who did you think was going to win? <laughs> so... Officially, uh, I did pick Poirier, but uh, if I'm honest, I was I was hoping for McGregor because he is from my side of the world. So <laughs> there's a little bit of allegiance there, you know, like UK and Ireland, we go kind of hand in hand. He's, you know, one of the biggest sports we've ever had from this side of the world. So, uh, you know, one of the biggest stars. So it was, uh, I'm always rooting a little bit for McGregor, but um, I know his antics don't always please everybody so how about yourself i thought when i first heard of the rematch i thought um i thought poirier mm -hmm. and then as i watched the replays of the first fight i noticed that uh he did hurt um poirier right before he got knocked out and you know the leg the, of course the calf kicks was a big uh, issue yeah and conor mcgregor as you know every time on his rematches he thinks a huge adjustment comes out in a whole different style what he did with Nate Diaz. You know, so, you know, I was thinking, okay, wait, I think Poirier, but Conor McGregor, you can't ever count him out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then during the build-up, when I was watching the build-up, the intensity that he had, I mean, not the shit talking, but the mm -hmm. intensity in his eyes and the, his body, you know, he was angry. Yeah. I thought, man, dude, we're going to see a different Conor. So for, for some reason, I thought first, second round, Conor was going to knock out Poirier. Yeah. And that's how I, I swayed into that. I, in a way, um, Poirier's, I mean, Poirier's a, the, a warrior, a gentleman, everything. I mean, you you have all the reasons to cheer for the guy. But I don't know, if, as a fan's point of view, I was kind of interested in having Connor win because that excitement, you know, of him talking shit. And then, mm -hmm. you know, he had a little confrontation with Dos Anjos in the back. Right. So, you know, if he loses, I, I was worried, worried about, you know, if he loses, what is the interest in that fight going to be? What's the interest in the, the rematch with Nate Diaz is going to be? Mm -hmm. So if he won, I kept, I felt the hype was going to be huge. And, you know, like, almost like how he went and bit, beat Aldo and then he beat um, Alvarez. And, you know, how that, that hype train just, just snowballed to a huge snowball. So I'm kind of worried about that. And, you know, um, the outcome didn't affect it because the way he lost mm. and you know he's a he's a master in a, um you know creating controversies yeah 
and he's screaming out, Doctor, stop it, Doctor, stop it, doing that kind of stuff. So it's like, for me, it was okay, good. I wanted Corey to win because he's a good guy and I love the mm -hmm. guy. But I didn't want the hype train to stop. I wanted that excitement with Connor. Mm -hmm. But it looks like we got the best of both worlds, you know. Yeah, true, right? Good, uh, good guy won, and, and, you know, the hype train is still going because Davis actually wants a, a rematch. Yeah, I was surprised. I guess it kind of depends on the, the injury, though, right? Like, I mean, you'd probably have a better idea than me. Like, do you think that would that sort of thing would require quite a lot of time out, do you think? To really... Yeah, I, it's, I think it's... Uh... It looks like it's a broken bone. Mm. The way the way it folded, I think it folded a little bit above the ankle, so the tibula, I think maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. So I mean, as you know, you know, um, Weidman went through that. Anderson Silva went through that. You know, that type of breaks take a while to uh, come back. You know, Weidman's finally. Mike is actually making a pretty fast recovery, so I think he's already walking on it pretty good. So. Really? You know, depends on the person. You know, it depends on the break, and I guess depends mm -hmm. on your age and your recovery speed. Yeah, it, it did look nasty though when he when he landed on that. It was a real cringe moment. But I mean, uh, how do you feel if the, if he hadn't have had the break, and let's just say the the round and you know it ended on that round, and then they went to round two? Do you do you think the the outcome could have been different? No. Uh, the first <clears throat> the first minute of the fight, Carter had a good game going. He's hitting him with the low legs, staying away from the strikes. And I think, you know, Poirier was just um, sizing him up, watching the distance, timing the low kicks. You know, came back with a couple of his own. And the first minute, I thought, damn, Carter's got a good game, man. He's gonna, I think he's going to hurt Poirier on his own game. Mm -hmm. And then, as soon as you, you're thinking that, ooh, he just hurt him on the leg. He just hurt him on the leg, you know. Poirier comes in with a, you know, I guess he, he just timed his punches, started hitting him with punches. He caught him with a little bit of a punch. He, uh, his corner backed up, and then I think Poirier caught him with a 2-3 combination. Mm -hmm. And then that's when, you know, Connor went in for a clinch. Mm -hmm. And as you know, you know, Connor's not a grappler. I mean, I'm sure he knows how to grapple, but his, Poirier's like total jiu-jitsu. And the fact that he grappled with, I went to grab Poirier instead of staying away. He he must have been getting overwhelmed in the the standing exchange. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, Poirier has the edge on the ground. Did coming from yeah. from your side of things, did you know? Obviously, we're talking that a long time ago, but was that really a big part of the game? Sort of psyching out your opponents from you know before the bell sort of rang. Really, the you know things like the stare downs. Stuff like that. Did that did that play a part in your career? Do you think, or is that something that sort of evolved later down the line? I think I think it evolved later. Mm -hmm. I think in my day, very few fighters did that. I didn't definitely do it. I I did have that notion of I'm gonna it's, it's either kill or be killed. So with that, you know, intensity and that belief, mm -hmm. I mean, thinking that this guy is here to try to kill you. There's a there's a real intense stare. There's a real intense energy. Mm -hmm. And when you when you look at him across the ring, you're not looking at him as a friend. You're not thinking of shaking hands. You're looking at, you're literally looking at. This is the guy who's gonna try and kill me today. So that that stare, that intensity, it, it might look like we're trying to intimidate each other, or look like I was intimidating my fighter, but I was not trying to intimidate him. I was actually looking over at the guy that's gonna try and kill me today. Mm -hmm. And there was, there was no there was no um intimidation techniques. They are like Connor. Talks about his wife, and you know, mm -hmm. Connor, you know, says all these things. I'm going to murder you, and you know that kind of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. that, I think that's that's all a part of that that um, that hype game that he's trying to psych um, Poirier out, get him angry, and get him out of his game. And as supposed to put it into context, when when you were fighting back then, it was so such a new sport, and you know that that people didn't really know what was going to happen. The rules were so so much less as well. The game hadn't really evolved as much, so the thought of you know I could potentially die in that ring was way more true than it is now. Obviously, you know compared to all the sort of commissions and things that are in place now, uh, you know I could see why you why you'd have that feeling. That was a, a big part of your fights, right? That sort of attitude to going in. I know you used to used to write the letters as well, right? Yeah, well, back back in that day, the sport was very um, new. It was not understood. 
So, you know, half the people called it human cockfighting. Half the people thought it was crazy. You know, and because there was so, so, so little knowledge on the sport and how dangerous it was, there was that element of, of, wow, you're, it's not a sport. It's a, it's a, it's a fight, you know, it's not a sport, you know, so there was that different intensity, I think, mm -hmm. in, in the fighters of the day, you know, the OGs of uh, MMA. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in, in this day and age now, it's just more of a sport. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't agree with the way Connor talks about religion and family. Mm -hmm. And I think, I believe he does go a little bit overboard. But, you know, bottom line is you're going to try and knock out the guy, you know. I mean, for, for, for me, myself, if I was in that situation, the guy was talking that kind of shit. The fact that we're going to try and knock each other's head off, it doesn't matter what he says. It really doesn't matter. I mean, bad taste, yes, but I don't think it would bother me. Like, it bothers some of these fighters or, or some of the fans say that it's it's bad taste and it's disrespectful and, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. He said something about Poirier's wife is direct messaging him. Mm -hmm. It's like <clears throat> some people may get angry and say, oh, you're saying that Poirier's wife is a, you know, is a, is a player. But come on, you, you, I mean, is, any, anybody would know that that's bullshit. Yeah, he's trying to piss them off, you know. So it's a, uh, it's that type of game he plays. You know, I don't agree with it, but you know what, man, it, it does hype it up. It mm -hmm. does get, you know, some people get it gets some people to hate him and want him to get his ass kicked. Yeah. If you're cheering for Connor, if you want his ass to get kicked, you're still tuning in and being paying the pay per view. So he, what he's doing is working. Yeah. Right. And yeah, he's had, like you said, he's had a lot of success in the past just by, you know, getting in their heads. But uh, a couple of other things on the, the UFC card, I just wanted to touch on you just because uh, it'd be interesting to see what your thoughts are. The, obviously, Sean O'Malley is, uh, you know, one of the rising stars of the UFC. Um, and he took, uh, he had the fight with uh, Mutino, I think it is, who's, you know, a bit of a star on a regional base, but not, you know, not really well known at all. Um, and O'Malley was like a huge favorite to win that fight. I'm yeah. curious to know what you thought of that performance, though, by Mutino, because the amount of punishment he took, he kept coming and kept coming, and I think a, you know a lot of other fighters might have crumbled with some of those shots. But what what was your impressions of that fight? Yo, oh yeah, that guy was. What was his What's his name? Uh, Mutino, I think. Mutino, yeah, yeah, Mutino was tough, man. Mm. I mean. I think he was actually flustering uh, O'Malley. Mm -hmm. At times, you know, I think in round one, you could you saw, I saw O'Malley check the clock like two or three times, and you the fighter usually doesn't check the clock unless he's worried about how long more he has in the round. Mm -hmm. And you're the fighter's not usually worried about how long he has in the round unless he's, you know, maybe getting tired. So he didn't. Sean O'Malley didn't show it in the fight, but. The fact that he's checking the, you know, checking the, the clock, he's uh, nailing this guy with almost everything he threw. But he just kept coming forward, and you know that that really, um, that really will play a psychological game on on, on you mm -hmm. if you're doing that and you're hitting the guy, hitting the guy, and he keeps coming forward. You know that kind of that kind of style, you know, you can you can you can break a lot of fighters with that toughness. Yeah, it was a hell of a debut for him, though. I think uh, at least just from that performance alone, he should get another fight in the UFC just to really sort of yeah. show him where it is. Well, you know, the thing, the thing too that ran through my head was, man, he did that for three rounds, and there was yeah. only 30 seconds left. Yeah, and it and O'Malley has, you know, he's knocked out guys like Eddie Wineland. Um, so he, he's, yeah. he's got and the he power in his hands. Yeah. yeah. So, um, that guy, that, he's really tough. I'm just going to see uh, if any other sort of thoughts. I saw you tweet about the Brad Tavares decision, which uh, <laughs> was a bit of a weird one, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm also biased because Brad's a good friend. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, I love the guys at um, Extreme Couture. We went and trained there. Uh, I, I, I'm, kind of, I'm considering them as probably going to be sure she's a fight team. Right. So, you know, I have a little bias on that too, but Damn, he 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 um he got caught in the first round, yeah. But the second, third round, he won outright. 
Exactly. And almost finishing him in the third round. Mm -hmm. I mean, he almost, I mean, Brad almost knocked him out in the third round. I thought he was going to actually finish the fight in the third round. So, yeah. amazing, man. When you, when you, you're so scary yeah, when you hear that split decision, man. It's like, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I get credit to Brad, though. Like, he's now, um, has the, the joint amount of wins with Anderson Silva, I think they said. So, 14 wins yeah. apiece in the UFC, which that is shows his tenure yeah yeah so brad you know brad he's 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 really flies under the radar man yeah he's yeah. a super good fighter man but he just doesn't get that recognition hopefully he starts getting it from now yeah i hope so i mean he's fought quite a lot of the you know the big names he's had like the adesanya fight but that was quite some time ago so it'd be good to see him like you know get another shot because i think he was coming in ranked at number 15 which seems a bit I don't know, that seems a little bit low, in my opinion, so. Well, definitely going to jump up on this one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, do you want to, any thoughts on uh, Dustin versus Oliveira, if that fight was to happen? Oh, Dustin Oliveira. Oh, mm -hmm. that'd be an interesting fight. Because both of them have everything. Yeah. You know, Dustin has a standing, Oliveira has a standing. <clears throat> I almost feel like uh, Oliveira's a, a little bit more dangerous in both standing and the ground. But, you know, Dustin, Dustin's a solid fighter, so that's going to be an interesting fight. That, isn't that that's what's next, right? Potentially. I mean, if, if you were Dustin, and I think I know probably the answer to this, but you could potentially do a fourth fight with McGregor, let's say, if the injury wasn't too bad, and you're going to get, like, a boatload of money for that because, obviously, the way this fight's ended, people, you know, still want some sort of resolution to this fight. Or you could fight for the championship against Oliveira, who arguably, with Khabib now gone, is pound, you know, um, the, the the top of that division. So if you were Dustin, which, which way would you lean toward? Definitely the title. Mm -hmm. Especially if I already beat you know Connor twice. For me, it's it's not much of a um, challenge anymore. Mm -hmm. Two to one, you know. Of course. You can't. It doesn't mean you're going to be win the next match, but still, you've already beat him twice, and Oliveira's uh, the man. You know, shoot for the top, man. I would definitely go for uh, Oliveira for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know, that's different though. You know, this this day and age, it's about supporting your family, making money. So, mm -hmm. for me, I was, I didn't worry about money. It was about challenging myself and, and fighting the best guys. So it depends on what what type of mode of Poirier's thought process is. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, um, this is uh, this is concludes our discussion on UFC 264. Um, you know, if you guys have any comments or any uh, ideas, um, write them in the comments. And this was this is going to be a intro to more to come. Um, me and James are planning more stuff. I want to talk more about you know my career, my fights. So like and subscribe and follow follow my channel and we'll get a lot more material out.